What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to a special edition of the Greg Campy Show. We're live in RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. My name is Neil Roll. Of course, he is a coach. Greg Campy, Camp, anything going on? Yeah, I, personally, I wish we were having another show next week because I think we were good enough to get there, you know. I think that that proved out through this whole thing as, as cool as what happened happened. You know, we were 15 seconds away from being in the Sweet 16, and I... I also think we found out that uh, we were good enough to, to get and play on. I mean, the, the, as I said before the tournament, somebody's when we were trying to figure out who we were going to play, I said there were only three teams that I was concerned about. I didn't want to play Purdue, I didn't want to play UConn, and I didn't want to play Houston. And it worked out in our bracket that only Houston was in that, and we wouldn't have seen them, you know, until this final Elite Eight game, and their best player got hurt. So, right. You know, it really worked out where we were in a position that we could do something special, and and we did we did something really special. But it's I'm still wishing we could have had a, a radio show next week. You know, no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And that's a that's a hot topic too. Like an to ask campy. By the way, you can get involved too. Go on X. Uh, send us a. They still call it a tweet on X. I, I don't know what the protocol is on that. You know what I'm talking about. Send a tweet with the hashtag Ask Campy. You can ask questions to Camp. We will get to those. Got some special guests in the house here tonight, yeah. Camp. Uh, of course, we got Blake Lampman in the house here tonight. We'll talk to Blake. Uh, Trey Townsend is here as well. Absolutely. And uh, Jack Volke. Uh, so there you go. And we'll, we'll talk to all of you. Hold on, hold on. Just because they're the guys getting all publicity, I also see Chris Conway. Yeah. Oh, Chris is in the house. Oh, nice. Nice. Chris Brew's in the house, right, too. Brew, hey, what's going on, everybody? With his new hairdo. Uh, it's new? Okay. I'll, I'll take that, though. I'll take that. Um, but, Camp, I mean, just... What was it? What was it like? I, I know that, that we've talked about this for a minute privately. Take everybody through that that 24, 48 hour process. We get the win against Kentucky. What was it like for you, Cam? Well, I think that you know. First of all, I just want to talk about our fan base, and obviously, look around this room, and we showed we showed the nation what you know our fan base is about. We brag it to our recruits all the time about you know the arena and, and how loud it is and how good, you know, our fan base is, but the world got to see it in Pittsburgh. Um, it was just unbelievable to walk out on that court. And I'm sure the players are going to tell you the same thing. We walked out on that floor and you've got big blue nation who is supposed to be the greatest fan base in the country. And while there were a lot more of them, you know, uh, they, we were so much louder and it from, a, from the floor, you really hear that stuff. Our players hear it. When you're on the floor and it's coming at you, they'll, the noise that went on, especially when DQ made the shot in the corner to, you know, kind of seal it, um, the noise that came from that building was louder than anything I'd ever heard. I only heard one other thing louder than that during the whole week, and this is the – I was just telling Bernie back there about it. I've never experienced this in my life, and it wasn't – our fan base, they didn't care. It was Jack Goldkey, I guess, because they already didn't know when loving, right? Right. But the rest of the people in that building before the NC, or during the NC State game, you know, Jack comes off the bench, and with about three minutes into the game, we had fallen behind six to two or something like that. And I didn't wait till the timeout. Normally, I wait till the first timeout to put him in, but I didn't want to do that. I, he stood up and started going to the scores table, and you would have thought somebody made a basket to win the championship. I mean, right. that crowd went crazy. That that football player looking guy had just stood up and was going down to check in. I mean, I'd never heard anything like that in my life of, of 20,000 people going nuts over a guy checking in. Cam, you, you guys were in the locker room and Jack kind of came, came out first to, to get loose and everything like that. You thought the Beatles walked out there. I mean, every, everybody in the arena, they stopped what they were doing to watch Jack stretch. It was, it was wild. There's some weird people in this world. There are. There are. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, there, no, absolutely there are. No, but we'll, we'll talk to Jack coming up in just a little bit. But anyways, going back to yeah. what I was saying, our fan base was just, in the amount of people, you know, we had a tremendous crowd for, for Kentucky, but the amount of people that just got in their car and drove to Pittsburgh for the game Saturday out of this world. And if you, if you don't understand 
how much that means to our players and to, to us. It, it was just crazy. And, and I just want to thank everybody in, that wore a grizzly shirt. And I had a buddy of mine that was in the Caribbean uh, on vacation watching the games. And he, he's his son's one of our managers. And he uh, he texted me. He goes, every, I wore my grizzly shirt and everywhere I went, people were screaming at me, go Grizzlies, go Grizzlies, you know. And I think the day before the Kentucky game, if he was walking through with that shirt on, people would have gone, Where, what's that, you know. And now everybody, right, everybody knew. And I, I told our team, you know, we have we got the perfect draw. This is a chance to change your lives. And I think they all know their lives were drastically changed. No, no doubt, no doubt about it. And, you know, as I asked the question in, in the postgame presser, arguably the greatest moment in Oakland University history was that night. I mean, it just was. And the impact that it had from coast to coast and what it did for visibility of the university and all that stuff, Kemp. I mean, it was it was a special moment. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, and it's it's not arguably. I mean, it is. There's no question about it. You never know who's in the room. Yeah, I don't you know, care. So. I mean, as a coach, you know, I get asked all the time when you coach in one place as long as I have, who's your best player? Who's the greatest team? And you never want to say anything. You just, you know, you never, you want to give each player and each team their due. But in this case, there's just the the tidal wave that has hit our program and this community and, and all the stories that I've heard about the watch parties and, you know, all in Detroit. And it, it just wasn't Rochester and Auburn Hills and Rochester Hills. It no. was the whole, you know, 313, 248, 586, the whole area. Every bar, every place. I got friends that were all over the country were saying people were just packed in bars because you beat the Dallas Cowboys of college basketball. You beat the villains, you know, and the whole world was when DQ shot went in every bar in this country, except the ones in Lexington, Kentucky. And I do know the ones in Louisville. They were going. (laughs) They went crazy with their wallet, too. (laughs) I love that stuff. Well, Giz Giz told me a story that, that... uh, he was, you know, we had Tennessee here for the, the we were hosting the NCAA tournament this weekend, and all the Tennessee fans were telling him that you think the people in Louisville like you. The whole state of Kentucky is on your side, you know. I mean, the whole state of Tennessee is on your side because they beat Kentucky. It's not just Louisville. Right. And, uh, yeah, it, it's it's just crazy what that win meant to this whole country and, and the status that we have. And, I don't know if it'll be 15 minutes of fame, but I know one thing for the next, you know, the the only thing that I can compare it to was when Bryce drew for Valpo in the nineties made that shot. Right. And it's still, you watch any NCAA, you know, tournament highlight or, uh, um, you know, uh, commercial that the NCAA turn, you see the Bryce drew shot. And I'm going to tell you, I think for the next 20 years, you're going to hear Jack Oakey say, we're not a, bu- uh, we're not a Cinderella. Yeah. yeah I really do. Absolutely. Um, you know what else camp, like as, as the numbers start to come into it, and you were talking about reactions and stuff like that. I guess they put the score on the scoreboard at LCA during the Red Wings game and the crowd just erupted at little Caesars arena. All right. They've showed the last couple minutes of the game. While the hockey game's being played on the scoreboard, they had our game. They showed the Kentucky game. Yeah. And, and, and the numbers continue to come in, Camp. I, I'm sure, I think I sent this to you as a matter of fact. Uh, Oakland versus Kentucky was the highest rated NCAA round of 64 game since Zion Williamson played at Duke. I mean, what, 4 million viewers. Um, and the, final, the final numbers were the, it averaged 6.3. Million and I think it peaked at like 8.2 million people. When it watched. went down to it, right. right? Which is the, as you said, the highest rated round of 64 games since Zion Williams. And Oakland University camp is at the forefront of all. Is it? Is this still? Is this real to you yet? It's been hard for me because the way it ended, and and you know, the problem for me, and I don't want to get too sentimental because five of those guys are here right now, and I really don't want them to know how I truly feel. Um, <laughs> is that I didn't get to coach him anymore. You know, that right. that was the saddest part for me because there wasn't a day this year, and, and I don't know if I could ever say this in my coaching career, there wasn't a day this year I didn't want to go into that gym. There wasn't a practice I didn't want to go into. And when you have the leadership of Lampman and Townsend and, uh, and you know, 
the unselfishness of a Rocket Watts and the, you know, we've got a couple kids that have gone in the portal and they should go in the portal because now's the time to worry about themselves and that. But there was a never a point this year that there was a single player that put themselves above the team. Right. Trey never put him, and Trey had a lot to play for this year. And he never put himself above the team. Blake never put himself. Chris Conway never put no Baru, you know, he came here with this great, you know, he's going to be this. And then he missed three months and it set him back and he never complained. He never bitched. They just loved each other. And from a coaching standpoint, I think Smitty and Bobby and Cub will tell you the same thing. We just relished going into that building every day. And think about your job and what you do in life. And when you worked, if you don't anymore, there had to be days you didn't want to go to work. I mean, there just had to be. That's life. That's human. I never had that. Right. I know from from the time we started in June until the time it ends, I never had that. And that's one of the reasons it's been so hard for me because I, this, I mean, I had coaches jealous. And I, you can't, if I showed you the, the texts I got from coaches and that about that group of kids you had and you could just see it. You could see it on your face, Campy. You could see it, how they, the kids handled adversity during games. I mean, I've said this a bunch in radio shows, and I want to say it to the people here. And I don't care if everybody in Kentucky is listening. We were the better team. Thanks. We were the better team. It wasn't, it wasn't a 10 game, you know, best of seven or a best of four. And maybe if it was, maybe that wouldn't have happened. But on that night, and Kentucky played good. Yes, I know did. their fans are mad and they that go watch the last five minutes of that game. Watch the last five minutes of that game. Watch Kentucky. They made a couple errors. They turned it over twice. We, we went to boxing one and they didn't realize it. And Shepard threw it away. And then Trey cut through a passing lane at a very, very important time, but he did that all year, and our defense will do that to teams. Um, but other than that, they, they were flawless down the stretch. They were down, you know, and, and Rocket made Rocket made some tough decisions in his life, but the decision he made to not shoot a crappy shot and throw it to DQ in the corner is the best decision in his life, you know. And, uh, and DQ buried it. I mean, we played – we played an unbelievable game that a team like Oakland shouldn't do down the stretch. You know, you're supposed to fold to the pressure of that. You're supposed to, when a team that's, you know, picked to win the national championship by a lot of people is played that good, you're supposed to fold and we never fold. And when this is all over and the sting of losing in overtime and not getting a shot and, watching North Carolina State go to the Final Four and thinking it could have been us. When the sting of that is gone, we're going to look back at that Kentucky game. And I hadn't watched I watched it two nights ago for the first time. And I, my juices got flowing, I'm going to tell you, because that we, were, we played unbelievable basketball. But the maturity and the ability to overcome adversity that our kids showed is because of who they are. You know, we've bragged about our kids all year. We bragged about their 3.4 in the classroom that they're, you know, whenever I say come to the radio show, they come. Let's go to serve food to the homeless. They come and they're happy about it. Can we do this? Yeah, coach, let's go do this. That's what this kid, these kids were. Yeah. And that's why they were able to handle adversity because of who they are as people. I mean, it's, it's, it would have been easy to fold. And everybody would have been able to say, oh, you played Kentucky. They're so good. And you played them so tough. If this, there was going to be no ifs. We were going to win the game. And, and they did. And I, I will forever be grateful to this team because they took me on a hell of a ride. No, absolutely, Camp. And, and that's something, you know, when, when I've done these interviews and talked about it, that's the message that I try to drive is we out rebound in Kentucky. Right. We shot more free throws. We out offensive rebound. We led for 28 minutes. Hey, we were the better team. Go back Fast. to that. We shot more free throws. At one point, it was 12 to 4. Right. The foul. So I, I thought there might have been a few people there that thought Kentucky should win. And, and, and a few of them might have had some stripes on, too. You know, early Maybe, maybe not. You know, yeah. We're, yeah. We're certainly not acute. We're just saying. You know, right. we're just saying. Absolutely. Just, it was just a feeling. Right. right? <laughs> 
All right, Camp, let's do this. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, I'm going to be joined by Blake Lampman. I'm going to be joined by Trey Towns. I'm going to be joined by Jack Golke. Uh, also, too, get your questions in. we got questions flying in with the hashtag AskCampy. There's a ton to get to. So when we come back, we'll talk to Blake Lampman and get things rolling here. This is a special postseason edition of the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hill. <laughs> To the Greg Campy Show live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. I'm here with the voice of the Golden Grizzlies. As always, the Greg Campy Show brought to you by Henry Ford Health. And right now, as promised, we are joined by Blake Lampman, everybody, here live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. And Blake, hey, man. Any, any, anything been going on at all? Yeah, nothing much, man. It's been hanging out. What you been up to? <laughs> uh, you know, the same. Uh, absolutely. Um, what do you say? Take us through it, Blake. Take us through being out there on the floor. Take us through. And look, you guys always believed that that, that was going to go down that way. Every single one of you to a man believed that. But take us through from that four minutes in when it was all going down. What was going through everybody's mind? Yeah, I think we we were prepared for the moment. Our, our, non, our non-conference schedule was so elite. Campy does this every year, and everybody asks, you know, why do you want to start your, your season 0-9? Uh, it's for when you get in moments like that. And I think – uh, the coolest thing for me was um, the day before we were talking in the locker room, we had like a media day and uh, me and some of the guys were talking about some of the Kentucky players, how they shoot 50% from three, all this. And Golke looked at us and he's like, like, so do I. Look at the last 13 games. I'm 46%. What are we talking about? Um, and then he went out and he, he did, you know, the unbelievable. And so just the confidence – um, that the guys had even the day before the game, uh, let alone when we walked out on the court. Um, I think that just speaks to what we were about all season. Absolutely. I mean, but Blake, you know, this happens, right? And we got guys like uh, James Honeycutt. I call him like the, the artist to the stars here in Detroit. He's up there. He's got the Blake Lantman caricature uh, drawing for, for you. You know, I saw you over there uh, meeting James and stuff like that. Is this, has this sunk in? Like, is this still wild to you or what? Um, to be honest, I'm just sad that we're not practicing anymore. Like yeah. Jack said, you know, it's just – it was such a great year, you know. You yeah. you don't understand. We had – I had 14, 15 best friends that I had to see, and they had to see me at 10 a.m. every morning. Right. 
Um, and now that that's over, it's like, you know, I'm waking up at 9 o'clock. Like, oh, what am I, you know? <laughs> Jack, Jack sent us a text after, uh, after probably two days later. He's like, anybody anybody trying to practice tomorrow? Like, and I think Trey was like, I, mean, I would do a Smitty defensive drill right now, boys. Whoa, who's in? That's, how, that's so, how hard up you guys were. Right? I mean, I, literally, though, like, it was just, it was such a, it was such a joy. And, uh, you know, my first four years, I've, I've had some great teammates, but, the guys that I that I got to be with this year, man, they're my brothers for life for sure. My coaching staff, my family. So, um, like I said, I'm just I'm sad it's over, but um, it hasn't really sunk in that it is, you know. Yeah. So. That, well, and, and knowing you too, like, and, and I try to paint this picture, and I've talked about this publicly. We've talked about it privately before. For you to get out on the floor, because people don't realize how close you were to not playing this year, like that. But that was a 50-50 decision for a very very long time. The extra work that I saw you put in that, you know, beyond practice, beyond weights, beyond all that stuff, the stuff you had to do personally to get out there on the floor, you went through it, man. I mean, you, you absolutely went through it, but I know what you're going to say. It's those guys, man. Yeah, well, I mean, I think everybody goes through it. You know, when you right. have a season where we played, you know, I, we played four extra games that I haven't played in three years, you know. Um, since I've been here, so I think everybody had had some bruises and um, had to kind of grind it out. But that's that's the cool thing about college basketball. That's the cool thing about March. You know, you play a game, you get one day to recover. And um, I think I think everybody was kind of in a shock with how much attention we got. I don't know how you know Golki came out and he hit his first three or first three threes in the second game. I don't even know how he got a minute of sleep on Friday night or whatever. You know, Thursday night, his his phone was probably crazy that's a great I'll, I'll ask him that when he comes up here well that just sounds like a great question <laughs> Absolutely. You could do this. but i think i think everybody a part of oakland university like my family can attest to it too like they're people from back home are hitting them up people that i haven't talked to in five years that i've never thought i'd talk to ever again they're texting me so um it's it's crazy it was, it was an unreal experience and i think uh i think everybody's gonna have kind of the same testament um that was a part of Oakland University this year. I got two more for you uh, before we let you go. I got one question. I got one one statement that I want to get your thoughts on. First off, the question, Blake. You guys will go down in Oakland University history. Obviously, Oakland basketball history, but Oakland University history for what you did in this NCAA tournament. What's that mean to you? That means everything, man. Oakland University is this, this is my home. This is everything to me. And, um, I've been I've been telling I told Xavier Banks and a couple of younger guys Cooper Craig's I'm like you guys have the opportunity to be the most winningest player in Oakland history like you guys got to keep this going I want to I want to come back in you know a couple of years and and watch you guys be beaten beating the brakes off of Detroit Mercy and stuff like that so yeah. That, um, yeah, that never goes away yeah, yeah. It, but but yeah like I said earlier it, it means the world to me I mean I gave you know this is this is the last five years it's been absolutely everything to me and um, it's my life. It's my home. So I, I truly love this university. And then the last thing, Blake, um, I actually, I called you when we got back, you know, from Oakland uh, after the bus got back in town and, and I'm going to share what, what I talked to you about. Um, Blake Lantman gave his guts to this program, literally everything he had to be out there on the floor. When I think of Oakland basketball, I will think of Blake Lantman because he paid the ultimate price to be out there on the floor. And I just want to thank you for that public. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, no worries, man. Uh, next, I guess uh, Jack's up here next. So uh, welcome to the stage, everybody. Mr. Jack Golke. Absolutely. <laughs> Hey, uh, you're Jack Golke, right? <laughs> hey, uh, I'm Neil Rule. Um, I used to call your games when you played in college basketball. Do you remember me, Jack? I remember everybody. Do we? Oh, you do. Great to see everybody here. <laughs> um, I guess we'll start. We'll get right into it with you. The game's over. Uh, I remember we're in the hotel eating. What was the next 48 hours like for you? Uh, I still don't really kind of believe, like, everything that's happened. But, uh, I mean, Blake kind of touched on it. I think between Thursday night after the game, Friday night before the game against NC State, and then Saturday night after the NC State game, I think I got less than nine, ten hours of sleep those three days. So it was just a whirlwind. Like, 
I was trying to sleep. It was just the adrenaline was pumped up for 72 hours. It was all crazy, um, but a tremendous experience um, to be out there with my guys, and my coaches on that type of stage. I mean, that's what you dream of. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get into that. But post game, you you came on the air with me um, right after it was over. You put the headset on, and your first words to me were, "What I tell you, Neil," <laughs> and you were and you were telling anybody that anybody that would listen, you you knew this, like you foresaw this, you knew how this was going to go down. Yeah, um, I don't know what it is, but my whole basketball career, like I've always kind of been an underdog, and this year we were kind of an underdog as uh, going into the tournament. But I just I hate when people call me an underdog. I hate when people tell me I'm creating an upset or whatever it is just because I think we went out there and we knew we were the better team. Like, obviously, they got higher recruits and everything like that, but the amount of time we put in with each other, we were just so confident in each other's abilities and in the, you know, in the process that we had gone through with our coaches the whole season. We knew um, Kentucky had great players, but we didn't think that they prepared the same way we did. So that's why we were so confident. We just had – we had that preparation and that that buildup throughout the whole season. Talk with Jack Oakey here on the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills, home of the Greg Campy Show. Uh, Jack, I have to ask you this one because a lot of people have asked me this, so I'll ask you it. Who's the coolest person that reached out to you? <laughs> uh, the J.J. Watt video was really cool, uh, yeah. being a Pewaukee kid myself. Um, I've like met him once or twice, but to have him – send that uh, across the internet was was really sweet for sure yeah no doubt about that um you know too with kentucky and blake had talked about it you do talked about it with what they were and they're going to be three maybe four lottery picks on on that team but the way that you guys and again what camp was talking about you guys closed that out on them like you had the lead you were winning 28 minutes of the game yeah. you guys closed that out and then when you came on, and, and I'm curious to hear from the people, when you jumped on CBS and you're done talking, you're like, oh, we're not a Cinderella. What? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, man. Like, well, I what, got, what, what led to that? First off, I got to credit my guys for closing that game out because I don't think I scored for the last, like, eight minutes or something. So uh, shout out to them for that. But uh, I don't know. I mean, in the interview after the game, Campy and I were kind of just – we're kind of just loving on each other over there, <laughs> like just enjoying the moment, you know. Um, and that was just – that was a ton of fun. And, and when we were about to go out, I was just – I still felt like we were being considered the underdog. I mean, I understand that's how it's going to be. But I just – I wanted everyone across the country, I guess, to know that, that we were confident going into it. Like this wasn't a surprise for us, and I wanted people to know that because I think it's important – to have that confidence and to have that belief in yourself, because if you don't, I don't think we would have got that result. Uh, last one for you here, Jack. So, so what's, what's next for you, man? What do you got going on? I know you're out to Phoenix for the final four. I know you're hanging out with Barstool. Um, you know, I, I know you're doing all these kinds of things. What's next for you? Uh, I just signed an agent and uh, I'm going to be going down to Dallas after the school year's over to train and, and try to get ready for some uh, potential summer opportunities in like the summer league and things like that. And, I uh, just pursue a professional career uh, to the best of my abilities because I don't want to give up the game. It's given me so much so far, so many great relationships, so many great moments, and, and I think I can create a couple more in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. There it is, everybody. Give it up for Jack Gorky, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time, Jack. And uh, right now uh, we're going to talk. To Mr. Oakland, that is right, everybody. Trey Townsend making his way up here and uh, here at the Greg Campy Show live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. And uh, yeah, Trey, just kind of get that microphone as close to your close to your mouth there as you can. Gotcha. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely, absolutely. Trey, Neil, yeah. anything happening lately at all, man? Just uh, enjoying the moment, you know, watching Jack's social media blow up and watching him do all these ads and commercials behind the scenes. It's That's been pretty entertaining. So. I forgot to ask Jack, where's, what should I do if I have tax problems? Who should I who should I talk to? <laughs> oh, TurboTax. Okay, yeah, I, I, I think I will. Um, no, but Trey, uh, from your perspective, um, the, the last four minutes of that game, it was like a real-life Rocky movie, though. I mean, you had Kentucky playing at a high level. You guys certainly were playing at a high level. Just did you feel that way too? I mean, just blows being landed on each other. Was it like a heavyweight fight? It 100 percent was, and I got to give a lot of credit, like Camp said, to our fan base that traveled out there to help with 
with their punches and had given us momentum on the way back, which you could also feel in that arena. The game that was after us, all the fans felt like they were pulling for us as well because nobody else wanted to see Kentucky win that game. So every time we, we did something good, it was like the craziest rush of adrenaline. So no matter what punch they threw, we knew we were going to come down and everyone was going to be on our side and we were going to pull it out. What was What is that like for you? I mean, I guess you kind of answered the question, but when you have all Texas Tech fans and all NC State fans and they all become Oakland fans together and it's three quarters of the arena – against Kentucky. And and somebody told me one time, uh, when Kentucky loses, America wins. And, and so, like, did you feel like you were kind of playing for America there, I guess? Because, like, the, the whole arena, well, three-quarters of it, we're all Oakland fans. Yeah, like I said, it's – in the end of those games, you know, you're, it's a physical battle for 40 minutes and you're tired at the end. But any boost of adrenaline you can get is amazing. And like you said, no matter what we did, if we got a steal, a deflection, a, a made basket, every single person that was – wearing red, black, and gold was, was cheering for us. If they weren't in blue, they were cheering for us. So it was amazing to see, and it definitely helped us play well, out. Who was the coolest person that uh, that reached out to you, Trey? Because I know you were making some national headlines there, the story with your parents, obviously. I kind of went viral a little bit as well. Uh, who who'd you hear from? I still think the coolest thing for me, I told Griff this uh, at the Selection Sunday show, the coolest person that I reached out was Travis Bader from followed me back on Instagram. So that oh, was a, big time. That was a great moment for me. <laughs> As I was kid growing up, so that was, I think, the most special person that's reached out for sure. You going to run for mayor here uh, after after the, the playing career is over? I think I'm a little too quiet and shy for all that. So all that talking, so I'll, I think I'll stick to basketball. But I think you could. You, could he win for mayor if he ran for mayor? I'm just saying, think about it, Trey. That, that's all I'm I'll thinking. Keep it in the back pocket. Uh, I asked Blake this for you because obviously we know what what a special place Oakland is to you to go down as, as being affiliated with the greatest moment in Oakland history probably hits a little little more for you even, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. As I've been saying these past couple of weeks, you know, my dream was just to be a part of this program in any way, shape, or form. You know, I didn't care what, you know, what we accomplished. I just wanted to be in an Oakland uniform and play for Campy and, you know, be a part of this university. And, you know, I've seen a lot of special Oakland moments growing up. I've, I went to their two tournament games when I was younger and been a part of so many special moments. And to think that this group of guys, you know, people I'll be closest with the rest of my life uh, accomplished what we did this year and left our mark on this university. Like I've been saying, I couldn't have scripted any better or asked for anything different. It's just such a magical thing. Uh, by the way, uh, Trey, so big time now, Pro Sports Zone this Sunday, as a matter of fact. You and Jack Oakey have an autograph signing out there, I'm told. So uh, you'll have that going on as well. Um, thank you, Trey. Thank all, thanks to all, this whole team, man. I mean, what, what you guys did for this community, what you guys did for this region, college basketball you know we were talking about it earlier the, the highest viewed game since Zion Williamson was playing college basketball has it set into you it it still honestly hasn't because I'm still you know March Madness is still going on so it's kind of hard to you know hear all the stuff going on with that knowing how close we were but you know I just want to say how much I appreciate this fan base and how that how many people traveled out there because I knew you know, everyone that comes to these shows and the people that I've gotten to know really well over the past years, I knew they were going to be there. But seeing all the new faces and all the new Oakland fans, I feel that we've, you know, inspired and wanted to cheer for this school, come to this school and be the next me here. It's, it's been such a special thing. So I'm, I'm grateful for everything that's happened. Absolutely. We'll appreciate your time. As always, my friend, thank you yes, for, for coming by. Trey Thompson, everybody. Mr. Oakland here in the house. We'll take a break. Come back. portion of the show. We have questions flying in on X. Send it in with the hashtag Ask Campy. We'll get to that. It's a great Campy show. We're live at RJ's Club in Rochester Hills.
the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. He's your coach, Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule. Happy to have all of you a packed capacity, sold out, filled up building here at RJ's Pub. Certainly do appreciate everybody coming. Hey, up. Hey, awesome. hey, hey. Yes, sir. How about RJ's Pub getting a play on national t- primetime CBS? They're talking about RJ's Pub. And the season prize. And the season prize, Ken. And how cheap RJ is. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, you'll notice they brought out the season prize oh, for the house. Every, yeah, I mean, everybody, they, <laughs> they didn't want that rap now, you know. That's a heady play by Russ. That's yeah, a heady Russ, play. He's a smart man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You ready for uh, you ready for some ass campy? Sure. we got a ton to get to. Uh, why not? Why not just keep up the tradition? Pittsburgh Marty chiming in. So grateful for you uh, for the four most unforgettable days ever. The entire staff treated me like family. Uh, your players are gentlemen. In the words of Coach Norman Dale from Hoosiers, I love you guys. Moving forward, what does May, June, July look like for the program? Well, you know, we'll, we'll report our team reports at the end of Ju- uh, Ju- uh, June, and we'll know what our roster is by then. Right now, we're roster building and, and – uh, Roster saving maybe a little bit too, you know, we're, right. we're doing it all. We're trying to figure out who's who's going to be there and who's going to replace people that are leaving. And, you know, we have, like, I'm sure you, the, the true fans know we had a couple guys going to the portal and, and it's all love. I mean, we're trying to help everybody, put everybody in a position where they can have a chance to play there. Uh, in Osei Price's case, his senior year where, he, you know, he's not a guy off the bench. He's a, at a school where he's going to be the first line guy where he can be, the, you know, the man at, at a school and he should be that. And so we're, we're doing everything we can to help those guys. We're out there recruiting. My staff has been, you know, Smitty and his normal working 25 hours a day. Bobby's 25 hours. I mean, you know, the tough, they're all working their tails off to, we want to keep this thing going. You know, we've been here before, not at, we didn't win in the then state tournament. But if you'll remember, we took a, Texas team that was one of the best teams in the country to the wire and lost this time we won and got the extra games. So we've been there before and we stumbled and we don't want to stumble. Now we want to keep it going. And uh, It's easy to do when I, I got a staff like I've got, you know, I, I'm getting a lot of play nationally right now, but you know, the truth of the matter is my staff is just unbelievable and it's, it's just done a phenomenal job. They're, they're, they're really the reason these kids are here. Austin Davis, and I'm curious to get the answer to this one, too. How does it feel watching NC State continue the run to the Final Four? What does it make you think of? Well, Austin, to tell you the truth, it's it's a double-edged sword because I want them to win, and I hate that they're winning. You know, it's I, weird, I want, I want yeah. them to win. I want them to, I want them to win the national championship, but I hate the fact that they are. Yeah. You know, I hate the fact that they're playing. and, and It's – I think Trey and Blake, and they all, you know, they're – they know it's over, and so they're basking in that. And, and but if you deep inside of them too, they know too. And we played at a high level, and we were playing at a high level. Could we continue that high level through another two weekends? I really believe we can because of the momentum of riding the wave, right? And as good as we were playing, it wasn't a fluke. We weren't, you know. I mean. Goki was still 10 for 20. It wasn't like he was 10 for 10. Right. You know, I mean, there was, and he could go 10 for 10. So it wasn't like we couldn't give more. And so it's hard. Uh, Mr. Drew Huff on Twitter asked Campy, diehard fan since my freshman year back in 2015. Thank you to your staff and your team for the best two weeks of my sports life. What can fans in the university do to help capitalize on the team's recent success in terms of recruitment, game day experience, et cetera? Well, I, I think that our game day experience, and I don't know what fans are, but from what I've heard is, is you know, Giz, I love Giz and, and, and Steve and those guys. Now, everybody, they, they just do a tremendous job. And whenever we bring a recruit in, all they talk about after the game is, wow, what, a, you know, the game itself. Now, we don't show them our facilities because they wouldn't be saying, wow, then, but, you know, we're, we're – we're well, working. Don't worry, there's questions a little bit later yeah, on about that. You know, we're, the practice facility is. We're working on that. We're, you know, we're hoping to be in that in a year, and and so we're working towards that. But honestly, and nobody wants to hear this today. But the biggest thing we can do is, if you're going to invest, invest in the in the uh, the uh, collective, the collective, right? Because it's the way it is, and you know, I don't want. Never do I want my players to be making a ridiculous amount because I just don't believe in that. I don't believe they're helping them because even even if a guy makes 
let's say somebody gets two hundred thousand dollars. Well, they don't understand at that age taxes, and it's not two hundred thousand dollars. It might be one hundred and twenty, and then they buy a car and they buy this, and then it's gone, right. right? And it's not sustainable. So you know, I I want them to receive a piece of the pie for sure, and that's what the collective is going to do. It's never going to be ridiculous at our place. So I'd like. If I could get to a position where every one of our players is making, you know, 10,000 or something like that, to me, that's sustainable. And that's, if, and if they don't want that, don't want to be here, then fine, go somewhere else, right? A absolutely. Oh, I did want to bring up too, we were talking about uh, Trey and Jack, they're making the rounds. Uh, they'll be sounding the horn at the Red Wings game on April 9th. So if you're going out to the Red Wings game, uh, Trey and Jack will be uh, sounding the goal horn there at LCA. And that's concerning if we score, right? Well, no, they do that before the game. No oh, matter what. So you get to do it at least score. once. Okay, good. They beat Tampa last night. They're back in the I mix, know. Ken. Let's go. They're back in the mix. Uh, Camp, you and Trey will be throwing out the first pitch at the Tigers game on April 13th at Comerica Park. Yeah. I'm, I'm having nightmares about hearing Bob Euchre say, just a bit outside. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, Ken. It's certainly a lot of pressure. I'm not winding up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, Grizzly fan wants to know with the success this year, can we look forward to more funding going into game day experience, all that, you know, kind of the same thing. Yeah. I mean, sure. Uh, I, we do a lot on that. I mean, I, I, I think our game day is great. You know, we've just got it behind the scenes stuff is what has to get fixed. Absolutely. Uh, Jack will be out there too, throwing out the first pitch. Yeah, I, was yeah. Gonna, I thought he was, but yeah. maybe now that he's such a big shot, I mean, maybe he, maybe the guy's I'm making more money than I am right now. I mean, I, <laughs> Oh, we, we beat Kentucky, and I've gotten a lot of attaboys and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, radio shows and everything. Yeah, right, right. He, and his bank account has gone like this. I mean, my God. Well, if you're having tax trouble, Camp TurboTax, I was told. Yeah, Jack, I, I tell you, you talk to Jack. I'm not having any trouble. Trust me. <laughs> Um, Grizzly fan also wanted to know: uh, Can we get can we get custom made to order Oakland Nike jerseys now? Potentially with the new spotlight, is Nike well, going to be sending a semi to Oakland now, like they do with Kentucky? So I'm, you know, I'm I've been asked by our league office to now that you've experienced this, what could we do better as a league? And I, I think our department's going to do the same thing. I think our department knocked it out of the, you know, I think right. they knocked it out of the park. But the one thing that everybody was angry about. And I actually had people coming up to me in Pittsburgh that weren't Oakland people. And they're like, they're kind of mad. And remember how I was going to be a ticket salesman and, a, right. and a, you know, I was booking flights and doing all that kind of stuff. They wanted the Oakland Energy shirt. And I guess all the other schools were selling the Oakland Energy shirt. And, you know, we, they couldn't get that. And they, they, I think they wanted me to take the one on, I had on and give it to them. Um, but, you know, those types of things, now that we've experienced it, being able to have uniform, you know, I think we should have a Trey Townsend jersey and he should get the benefits from it. You know, if, if you sell it for 25 bucks, give him 10, give Oakland 10 and, you know, give Nike five. And, and uh, we need to do that for sure. And I think now that we're there and we've seen what we've created, it's our job to make sure those things happen. And now you have the juice to pull it off. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, MD Fun, who's in the house, uh, usually every single week, as a matter of fact. Camp, uh, ask Campy, talk about next year, the players we'll have, the places we're going to play, et cetera. Well, right now we have no guarantee games. We have Michigan State at Little Caesars, but usually by now, uh, you know, we're close to getting guarantee games. Right now we're not going to get any and for a while until they see what our roster is because – well, we did. Nobody's going to play us, right? And uh, I text, I text uh, Holtman today, uh, who uh, was the coach at Ohio State when we played Ohio State. He's now the head coach at DePaul. And I just I said to him, hey, Chris, I need money. Uh, um, I need a guarantee game. Which, you know, we're losing our whole team. We're not going to, you know, my whole team's in the – I mean, I painted this, you know, picture of us. And he wrote back – why the hell would I want to go against that zone again? <laughs> and that was the answer. That was just the answer. That was the last yeah. comment you so, got, right? Yeah. And the, the other side of that is we were we were trying to be in Kentucky's MT. The MT is the three-team tournament that we play one in every year. This year we were in the Cayman Islands. Kentucky has one next year, and, and there's a lot of money involved, and, and we were very close to signing that. And I it was just I was going to talk to Cal about it, and uh, – 
the guy that's running the tournament uh, text me the night of the Kentucky, after the Kentucky game with, so where would you like to go for your MTE next year? Because <laughs> this one ain't happening. So, you know, I, I, I really I have no clue who we're going to play right now. We have Michigan. We have Michigan State uh, in the in at Little Caesars. That's the only, and we're at Toledo, and we have Eastern Michigan at home. Those are the only three non-league games we have. Short season next year. I can't. Believe. Could be. <laughs> um, Wesley V uh, says, and he, we kind of answered it, but we have a hard time getting Power Five games next season. I think we just gave the answer to that one. It just uh, depends on what our roster is. Uh, looking forward, is name, image, and likeness money the single most important thing for recruiting and retaining this offseason? How do we compete in this new environment? The answer is yes. The answer is we're trying to figure it out. You know, we're, we're really on top of that. Smitty is is really, I mean, he's our expert in, on the staff on it, and he's working real hard. We're trying to figure out what people are, you know, what they're worth. It's crazy, but it's it's what it is. And we're going to, we love this just like you love it. You know, this has been an unbelievable couple of weeks. We want to do this every year. And to do that, we need players, right? we got to have good players. And I, I'm sure no Power Fives are listening right now, but we're going to have really good players next year. I'm telling them we're not. But, you know, we got Conway back. we got Baru. we got DQ. We've got – and we've got some guys in there. So. Uh, Gary McCarrick doesn't have a question, just a statement. He says, Coach, thank you for such a memorable season. We appreciate you and all you do for Oakland University. So what, it's he, just a statement. He, he texted that just as I wrote it. <laughs> we, we, we voiced a text. I like, I like yeah. that one. Uh, Trill Gunderson, does all this success mean we can get a fast track on the new practice facility? No, because they're fast tracking it now. I, I'm telling you, Aura has been uh, just a champion on this. She wants this, and uh, Steve and Aura and Steve Mackney have been out of this world on this. We're hoping to be in the actual playing facility next year. The goal is that week that the arena shuts down before the Michigan State game when we can't practice and we have to find places to practice, that that week the practice facility will open for practice. And then when the season ends in the spring, we'll be able to get into the locker rooms and the offices and we'll move everything into it in the spring next year. And I've been told, you know, right now we're on track to that. We're, I will say this publicly, I'll probably get in trouble for it, is we're probably a million dollars short, you know, of, of having it, everything we want. And so we're out there trying to raise another million dollars so that we can have everything we want. Uh, so if anybody wants to have the the uh, Neil Rule basketball court or the Neil Rule locker room or whatever like that, you know, a couple hundred thousand bucks, we get five people to do it, we'll have the greatest practice facility in the league. I endorse that. If somebody wants to do that, I, I certainly, I'll, I'll lend my name to it, Cam. Oh, free, okay. free of charge. I, okay. abso I absolutely will. Free of charge. Um, Gary also uh, Gary also asked, uh, for the NC State game, I was parking my car at the Marriott before the game, and the parking tenant saw my Grizz hat and wanted to know how to get one. And uh, I'll need to carry ne more gear next year to give it away. So I guess he gave him the Oakland hat, the parking attendant there. So he got some new fans in Oakland as well. I took a dozen hats there and gave them all away too. Um, Jimmy Kennedy, big shout out to, to Jimmy Kennedy too, back in our uh, 1270 AM studios all season long. Greg Hessen on the show here tonight as well. Uh, Jimmy wants to know, how has the magical NCAA tournament run changed you and how Oakland handle recruiting? And if so, how? I don't think it's changed how we handle recruiting. It's changed who's talking to us. You know, every six foot five. Uh, I can't say that. Every six foot five shooter uh, out there wants to come to Oakland right now. But, you know, their first question is, their first question, how much money is Golke, were you paying Golke, right? How much money were you paying Lampman? And the answer is zero, but because you, you come do what he did and you're going to make more than I make because that's what he's doing right now. That's, that's, the, way, that's the way that it works. Uh, let me see here. Uh, hashtag Ask Campy. Oh, Tony Paul, our buddy from the Detroit News. Uh, is Greg Campy worried about the state of his golf handicap now that he's getting such a late start to the golf season? You are compromised at Big Camp. You're behind schedule. Yeah, I'm really happy about it, too. <laughs> so there's some people in this building tonight that really know about my golf game. It's kind of it's kind of not real out there. There's this perception that I might be good. I'm not. So uh, there's a guy, there's a country club in, in uh, Columbus called Double Eagle. And 
when I go there with a friend of mine, Bill Larkin, who flies us everywhere, he's a member there, and we go there three, four times a summer, and it's very, very exclusive in that nobody's ever on the course, so the whole, all the staff is, you're eight people there, so they take care of you, right? right. One of the kids had asked me, you know, you guys open with Ohio State, can I have tickets? And I said, sure, I'll get you a ticket to Ohio State. So he couldn't go for some reason. So when we got in the tournament, was in Pittsburgh, he texted me, can I go, right? And uh, I go, sure, I'm, I, since you couldn't make the Ohio State game, I got a ticket for you. So he drove to uh, Pittsburgh, and he's sitting in the stands, and it, I put him right next to a, a, a relative of mine. And after the game, I saw the relative, and they're talking, and, and he, she said to me, he said, he said, you're not any good on the golf course. <laughs> I'm never giving a guy a ticket again. Yeah. That's it. I mean, what? I got you a $200 ticket for free, and you're going to go tell my sister that I suck? <laughs> He's right, yeah, yeah. but keep your mouth shut, right? I've, I've come to learn it depends on the stakes, right? Like, right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There's different There's different degrees of it. Um, Evan wants to know, how is recruiting going with all the all the guys hitting the portal? Uh, how do you how do you regroup the roster? Um, and does do you get an uptick in the portal because of what happened? We're getting an uptick of interest, yes. And, you know, our name is hot right now. People know we're in Michigan, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yes, we are getting an uptick, but it's still going to come down to, you know, what we can give them and those types of things. I'm very confident. I have a great staff. I'll say it again. I'm very confident that we're going to, it's going to be a home run year in recruiting. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all going to come down to that. And we have a tremendous core coming back. I think, I don't want to put any pressure on anybody, but I think there's a chance that we could go farther than we did this year if the right people come back and, and we, you heard about how they cared about each other. If we can carry that over and that becomes the norm, then I think, this is just a start. Kemp, I asked, I asked Blake that at one of the media availabilities, because that was always the line, right? Love each other more than they do. And, and you guys were 9-1 and, and you know, five points or less games. Do you believe that? Do you believe that comes into play when you're in a close game like that? Does that play a part? Yeah, and the only game we lost in that close game was when the referee swallowed his whistle against Toledo. Right. You know, and, and Trey should have been at the line shooting two free throws to win it. Um yeah, I 100% uh, believe that. And we talked that if you were in our timeouts down the stretch of Kentucky and even against NC State, the last thing said in every huddle is we win all close games, and they believed it. Uh, you can tell it's the uh, the postseason edition. You get a lot of golf questions here. Uh, Benny says, hey, Camp, how can I play a round with you on Sharp? I play very fast. Neil, you can join us too. So what do you think? We can get that done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring, bring some Diet Dr. Pepper and you got me. Uh, you're in there. Uh, and then the last one here, Camp, uh, at Oakland U fan. Camp, all that talk about Diet Dr. Pepper and all that talk about Portillo's, they haven't got you any endorsement deals yet? What's going on with that? Actually, Colin told me that Portillo's reached out to him. So I don't I don't know what that means. But Colin's not here tonight, so I can't ask, but he, he said they want to give the team a free meal next year when we're in Chicago or something like that. So... I mean, it's a start, right? I, I guess if we made the Final Four or the Sweet 16, maybe I would have gotten a free big beef dip or somewhere. I mean, I, I got free fries tonight, so who knows? Absolutely, Cam. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that uh, that wraps up the uh, the Ask Campy portion of the show. We got about three, three and a half minutes left, Cam. What are the final thoughts, man? Well, I think, I just think you have a, a group of young men that are very thankful. Um, I think Oakland will mean the world to them the rest of their lives. And I think o the Oakland fan base will reciprocate that. You know, I, I, I just, sports is a funny thing. And I remember before the championship game at, at in the conference tournament, it's so hard to win your regular season and then win the conference tournament. You have to be a special, special group. And, I told our team before we took the floor, because we never knew who it was on our team. Was it going to be Golke? Was it going to be Lampman? Was it going to be Townsend? Obviously, in the clutch, clutch situations, we're going to Trey. You, you know, you have to do that. You know, I'm not stupid. I, I understand that. And he always came through for us, right? 
But to get there, to get in those situations, it was always somebody different. And I made the statement that March, you know, March creates heroes or some, something like that. I know Giz did a shirt with it. And we had hero after hero. And that was what, it wasn't a hero. It was hero after hero. And then you know, obviously in the Kentucky game, and we told them it would change their lives. And I mean, Jack Oakey, as I said, is going to go down and it's, and again, Blake and I were just talking about part of it is goalkeeping, right? I mean, if that was Trey that had made 10, that's a 24-year-old a transfer from Hill. I mean, it's it's what athletics is about. It's what that tournament is about. He, he was epitomized what the NCAA tournament is. Here's this most unimaginable thing happening. And if you go back and watch the video, the shots he made, are crazy. I mean, they're absolutely crazy. And he believed every second. I'm not a guy that loves a guy sticking his tongue out and doing all the stuff Jack was doing that day. That If that were a regular season game, he and I had had a conversation maybe. But I was really happy he did that stuff. I mean, I really was because that just made that that made the legend grow, you know. And, and the other side of that is that everybody's so happy for him. Right. Everybody, our guys, you know, I mean, Tone Hunter, he was in every picture. Uh, a guy that wasn't even dressed um, what, from D Detroit. I can't remember. What's his name? What, you talk about, about for us? Yeah. Our, uh, Andre Paul? No, our walk. Hey. Hey. Banks. Hey. Banks. Yes. Banks is on the, in the New York Times. He's, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting old, I guess, but. He's in the New York Times. You show on TV, they're showing the pregame, and there's Banks. I mean, the whole team got involved in it, and it was unbelievable. So my final words on the season is our thank you to everybody. I was blessed to got taken on a ride by a group of kids that are just out of this world. And the whole university, if you could paint a picture of a group that you'd want to take you for a ride, it would be this guy, these guys. And we were all blessed to have that happen. And it will go down as one, if not the greatest season in Oakland history. And we were all part of it. I mean, the fan base, everybody was a part of it. And it was two of the best weeks that we could ever want. All right. Well, Cam, great season. And a big thank you to everybody that comes out. That will do it for this season of the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. We'll talk to you all next season. Cool. See you later.